In this No Man's Sky beginner guide, it should help all new and returning players have a great start on any difficulty. So when you first start a new game, normal is the mode that most of you will start with. Relaxed is also a good option. Creative is great for a second playthrough. It's very useful when you start getting into building, especially when you can switch modes mid-game. But I'm going to go into custom and set it to permadeath. And the reason for doing that is quite simple. With well, the difficulty set so high, and survivability reduced drastically, it means when you play in an easier difficulty, you know these techniques are very useful. And the first few hours of this game are going to be a lot easier. So when you first load in, the camera starts to pan around. This will give you a good idea of what kind of planet you're on, and you never start on a pleasant planet. And when the camera starts moving, and your multi-tool pops up, that's the direction of your ship. But before you do anything, you should go into your options menu, and go up to network. For your first playthrough, turn off multiplayer. Oh, and very importantly, turn off PvP. You can turn those back on later, but it's advised to keep them off for now. Another thing you should do is familiarize yourself with the controls. If you can access those in a separate screen, it will make your life a lot easier, as there's a lot of layers in this game, and so the controls are quite complex. So the very first thing you want to do is to go into camera mode. And because you've got multiplayer off, the game pauses, which is very useful in hard difficulty, as it allows you to check all the resources nearby. You also have the ability to move the sun so you can see plants that glow. It's also a good way to assess the planet you're on. And if you're not too happy with the planet you've started on, you can always start another save, remembering to delete the save that you're rejecting. But make sure to double check you're deleting the right one because it might be permanently gone. My own personal taste, if I was starting on a cold planet, I'd start again. I hate the cold planets. Anyway, let's boot up this permadeath save, and I'll speed up the low screen even faster. Right, that's the direction of my ship. Let's go into camera mode. And that's the first thing you want to look for when in camera mode, a cave. Caves are really important. It's not a big cave, it doesn't go deep, but it will give me enough shelter from the environment. But there's plants and materials there that I will need for later. I'm also using the camera to find the blue crystals, those are very important. What plants are nearby, what kind of rocks are nearby, and red and yellow glowing plants. And sometimes, if you're lucky, if you go high enough, you can actually see your crashed ship. Unfortunately, I can't see my ship, but you can't have it all. And anyway, your priority should be a cave. But let's shoot those blue crystals and get the dehydrogen. We can ignore that prompt for now. Let's shoot those little rocks. And collect those red plants, oxygen, quite important, quite a rare element now. At the cave mouth, you get the cave marrow plants. Those are very useful. And the stalactites and stalagmites give you cobalt. You'll need that too. If you pay attention to my hazard protection bar and watch how it recovers as I slowly enter the cave. Now I know I've got good shelter, I can start mining lots of materials around the entire area. Your multi-tool has got quite some rain, so you can shoot plants and rocks from quite some distance. Just keep an eye out on the numbers to make sure it's in range. And this is what's called a hazardous plant. Shoot them, you get oxygen from them. They can cause damage, so be careful. I'm back in the safe spot in the cave, so let's do some repairs. First thing to fix is the scanner. And then we want to install the visor, which involves crafting your first item. But if you look closely, it also gives you the instructions how to use it. To craft an item, just click on an empty square. This pop-up menu will come up then you can craft the item. In this case, a nanotube. And while I'm here, I'm going to craft some dehydrogen jelly. And while you're safe in the cave, you can investigate all the other products as well. But let's install the visor. Another thing to do is to scan all the rocks, plants and animals. Scan everything, it gives you units. And of course, nanites at a later stage. A little while after you fix the visor and the scanner, the next mission prompt will appear. This is a good time to check what repairs you need to do to your ship before you actually head there. You won't get the harmonic seal just yet, but the metal plate you can do now, pure ferret you can do now, and of course, the hydrogen jelly. To make the pure ferret, you need a portable refiner. You'll find that in your build menu. And to craft a portable refiner, you need metal plate and oxygen. So let's craft metal plate and put the portable refiner inside the cave where it's nice and safe. 
but as long as you remember to pick it up, you only have to craft it once. But the first thing I'm going to refine is the marrow bulbs, as that gives me sodium. And from the safety of your cave, you want to carry on mining rocks, plants, everything, just mine lots of stuff. And of course, carry on scanning things as well. Now you've got enough ferret dust, you can break it into a batch of two and then refine one batch into pure ferrite. Of course, let's make that metal plate for the ship as well. But before we head to the ship, we want to make those ion batteries. And if you look underneath build, you notice you've got a prompt to build them in batches. And the ion batteries help recharge hazard protection. But another priority before heading to the ship is life support gel. Okay, let's pick up the portal refiner. And as you head towards your ship, remember to pulse every so often, as this will show the location of oxygen, sodium and dehydrogen on your path towards your ship. So let's plug that little oxygen plant. Those blue plants will give you a boost to your jetpack, making you move faster. Whenever you see the hydrogen, pick it up. And not forgetting the sodium. Now you can see the mission prompt, but I'm not going to go with that straight away. I'm going to check out the immediate area. I found a cave, so I want to see where the path of that cave goes. I can see the exit, useful. Now I'm going to head to my ship and of course get in it. It's going to prompt me to repair my ship, so I'm going to repair my ship. But I still don't have the harmonic seal yet, I'll get that in a minute. And while I'm in my ship, I'll make some more life support gel. As soon as I get out of the ship, I'll do another scam. You also notice the mission prompt has disappeared. I'll come to that in a minute. Remember to search those boxes. Repair damaged machinery. Or oh, rusted metal you can refine into ferret dust. When you interact with it again, you get nanites. To fix the mission prompt, you have to go to this ball and interact with it. You can also double check the mission at the log window. So get back in your ship to progress the mission. Then go back to the ball to get the planetary chart. At this point it's worth mining lots of materials to build up life support gels and batteries. Remember when your hazard protection is quite low, the ship's a good place to take shelter. And craft your life support gel and batteries if you need them. Okay, we've prepped for the next stage. We can now pop that planetary chart and head towards the next location to get the harmonic seal. You may have to go overground, but I'm lucky enough, I can go through the cave system if you can't find a path through a cave system, above ground, just make sure you have plenty of life support and batteries. Because at this point you'll get your first scripted storm. And if you're above ground, it will eat through your batteries quite quickly. But if you're able to take a cave, you can carry on doing a little bit of mining. And in cave systems you'll also find things like the subterranean relics, which will give you vortex cubes, which you can sell for units later on. As you get closer to the mission location, the storm will clear. We're nearly at the mission location. Remember to search both buildings and repair any machinery roundabout. And when you interact with the hollow archive, not only does it give you the harmonic seal, but it also gives you the crafting recipe. 
This is also a good place to do some refining and farming if you need to. And then it's safe to head back to your ship. Remembering to mine and scan as you go along. Okay, we're back at the ships. Let's do the final repairs, installing the harmonic seal. And one more thing before we take off, you want to craft a lot of Starship launcher fuel. So you need ferret dust to make metal plate and a lot of dehydrogen. I'll make one more metal plate and five launcher fuel. But it might be worth making more, maybe ten. After all, the first few hours of this game is just being prepared. It does get easier. Okay, we're ready. We can take off. Next part of the mission is testing your ship. Which will trigger the incoming message. And if there's any asteroids nearby, shoot them. You may get gold, which is useful for later. Silver, which you can sell if you want. But tritium is your priority. But anyway, let's head to the next mission location. As you get close to the mission location, go into camera mode. You might see a nearby building, which is usually the mission location. But if you can't, just land, it won't be too far. And once you get out of your ship, this is where you'll be introduced to the sweep scanner. And when you see those four lights flashing, that's the direction you want to go. It also gives you the estimated distance, 193 year, so fairly close. And because my launcher fuel is fully charged, I can call in my ship and pick up that save point. When I go to that broken machinery, the mission prompt, I'm given the base computer and the terrain manipulator. Go back to my ship and then install the terrain manipulator. Two carbon nanotubes and a hydrogen jelly. Right, now that's installed, we can do the next part of the mission, looking for copper. So use your scanner to find the closest batch. And that one's only 177 years, let's head there. It'll tell you how much you need to collect down here. Once you collect enough, the instructions to switch mode is up there. Because now you can switch to flatten mode and mine a lot faster. But you get less, so that's why you mine properly first. Okay, we're back at the base, let's bring out the portable refiner. And turn the copper into chromatic metal. Oh, and remember to check all the boxes. It's also a good time to do some backpack management. Those crystal fragments turn into dehydrogen. Go into the build menu and put down a base computer. Then interact with it to claim the base. Then interact with it again to get your first set of base parts. Then when you go into your build menu, you can see the material you need. You're going to need a lot of carbon. But once you've collected a lot of carbon, you can start building. And at this point, you should familiarise yourself with the build menu. Toggling the camera on the right hand side is quite important. And being able to turn snap on and off is also very useful. But don't worry about your first base. Most people don't keep their first base. It's usually in a bad planet in a bad location. So just build a box. But once you've built your box, the next part of the mission is prompted. Another scripted storm usually comes in, so dive inside your box. And then you can move your base computer inside your box. Build a construction research unit. You're going to have to make some magnetised ferrite. So put down your portal refiner, then refine ferrite dust into pure ferrite, but if you've got pure ferrite, you can refine that into magnetised ferrite. Once that's refined, you can put the construction research unit in the corner. And your priority here should be the base teleporter module, the biofuel reactor, the electrical wire, you'll get that for free, followed by the battery and the solar panel. 
So a total of 14 salvage data. So with the analyze visor, look for that little symbol. You might be on a planet like me with gold ones, ignore them, and there'll always be one or two buried near your base. Oh, and keep an eye out for broken machinery. There's always one near them as well. As I dig up this one, collect the salvage data, refill my hole, and then look for more. I'll be back when I've collected enough. As I've raised my base slightly off the ground, I'm going to put some stairs down. Then buy my priority items. Of course, my base is not going to be big enough, so I'll extend it a little bit. The materials for the base teleport module isn't too difficult. Biofuel reactor, metal plate, oxygen, not too bad. The battery, magnetized ferrets, you know how to do that. From condensed carbon, just refined carbon into condensed carbon. As we don't have enough gold yet, we can make the solar panels. But we can build the biofuel reactor, the battery and the teleporter. Once that's all built and wired up, we can now put carbon inside the biofuel reactor. Which will prompt the next stage of the mission. Interact with the base computer and head to the space station. Remember the mission prompts don't always pop up straight away. So let's get into a ship, refuel a launch fuel, and then take off and head to the space station. At this point you'll get some great music. It's also a good time to upload your discoveries. Head to the Galactic Trade Terminal. Sell any items you don't need, or you know you can easily replace. And if they've got it, buy some gold. But as you're short of units, it's worth going to Catalog and Guide. Finding the item that you need the materials for, in this case solar panel, then you can see exactly how much material you need, so only 30 gold. So when I go back to the Galactic Terminal, all I have to do is buy 30 gold. You can also buy and sell things from the traders who fly in. Okay, next part of the mission, we have to talk to three of the guys at the space station. Make sure to only talk to the guys wandering around, not any of the kiosk guys first. Because if you talk to one of the kiosk guys first, it sometimes means you can't interact with them for a few weeks until it resets. That's part of that mission done, so let's head back to the base through the teleporter. The first thing you're going to do, as soon as you get back to the base, open up your build menu, select the solar panel. You can either place it in the floor if you've got the materials, or switch to the wire menu. Put the wire icon in the wall like I'm doing, and hit wire and place at the same time. Now you've got a solar panel on the wall, out of the way, you wire it up, and you're ready to go. Now interact with the base computer, which will trigger the next mission prompt. At this point, I think you've got a great start and you're perfectly capable of carrying on on your own. But I have one more important tip. When you progress far enough into the story, you're going to have all these missions in your log. And different ones are going to prompt at different times. And sometimes you'll find that the missions will slip onto another mission while we are in the middle of one. So, every now and then, just make sure you select the mission that you want to do. And that should reduce any confusion. I hope you liked the video. And if you did, hit that like and subscribe button. Or on the bell thingy. And of course, thank you for watching. See you all later.